I would take a boring, truthful person <laughs> over a very exciting, false person. And somewhere in our own hearts, the truth needs to look more attractive than the personality. Hi, this is Ben Lowell with Back to the Bible, Canada's Truth and Life Today. And of course, we have with us Dr. John Newfeld today and uh, Isaac Dagno from In Doubt Ministries. Uh, we have a lot of interesting things to talk about. And, and what we've been trying to do recently is, is talk about some of the topical, timely things that are happening. Now, a real interesting thing happened this past week, and that was the death of, uh, uh, of Charles Manson. He was 83 years old. Now, probably not for Isaac, but for you and I, there's probably a lot of flashback of memories that, uh, that we think about when we think about Charles Manson yeah. and the things that went on and the tragedies that took place that he orchestrated and uh, manipulation of minds as he uh, influenced people to do just, uh, just terrible, terrible things. Uh, and murder seven people as it was. And, uh, I, and I thought it was really interesting because their perception of him was like a Christ-like perception. Right. They saw him as being like Jesus, and that's why they chose to follow him. And, and it's really interesting to look back and see the manipulation of minds. And it made me start thinking about uh, today and, 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 and how we deal with those that teach untruth, mm -hmm. uh, even within the church or outside of the church, but those that deal with uh, teaching untruth. And, you know, Paul talks about it multiple times. He talks about uh, those that are teaching untruth within the church and outside of the church. And, and I just wonder today in this age, how do we protect ourselves from, from these types of teachings that would lead us astray? Yeah, that's such a big topic to talk about, and, and I'm, I'm glad you've raised that, Ben, because, I mean, I think Charles Manson's death does cause us to reflect how easily we are led astray. Remember, Jesus called us sheep, yeah. and sheep look for someone to follow, and it's, I think, part of human nature that we are looking around and saying, whom shall I follow? Now, following is not a bad idea, right? I mean, I mean you follow, you know, we're kids, and we follow, a, you know, a great school teacher who leads us into uh, some field of knowledge, that's a good thing. So, you know, we are looking for people to follow. And I think the first thing that we need to do is admit that to ourselves. Hmm. And so I think after we admit that to ourselves, we need to ask ourselves, who is worthy of being followed? Yeah. Um, I, I think we can answer that from a number of perspectives, Ben. I, I think from simply a Christian perspective, we need to ask ourselves, how familiar am I personally with long established biblical truth, things that I know to be true doctrinally so that Whenever anyone calls me to follow spiritual truth, that I already know the major tenets of the Christian faith and can compare what's being said to what I know to be true from the truth that has been revealed from ages past. Yeah. So we need an anchor point. And if you take away a person's anchor point, I don't know how you make that decision on who to follow and who not to. Yeah, because I think it's true to be said, too, that uh, over the years we've seen people that uh, we would say they teach truth. Yeah. And then over the years, we see them move away from teaching truth to something else. So we just can't buy in on the personality right. or the person. We have to buy in. And I would think when it comes to young people who can be often swayed, as we all can be, just not young people, by personality, Person how do we protect ourselves against the personalities that would influence our lives. Yeah, I mean, ch the charisma can go a long way, especially if it's in a very attractive, trendy way. A lot of people can just kind of lock in and just follow blindly. Um, you know, it's interesting, my mom, uh, she used to work at the bank, and when they would uh, learn uh, about counterfeit bills and all that kind of stuff, they wouldn't train them to learn the counterfeit bills. All yeah. really well. They learned the real stuff really, really well first. And this is just a kind of a, a side point of what you already said, Dr. John, but the, I think when it comes to young people protecting ourselves against false teaching, we have to know the gospel really, really well. So when you, you know, consider the book of Jude, which was written really primarily about false teaching at the time, I think almost every New Testament book talks about false teaching. But, you know, Jude's appeal is to contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. And if you don't know that once for all faith, if you don't know that doctrinally what that faith is, constantly feeling it, knowing it, building yourself up in it, reading about it, hearing it, then it can be really easy to be swept away. 
Yeah, ben, if I can yes. just interject there, because I like to just uh, you know, feed on what you've just said. I think that's really crucial. So we need to help people understand what is that truth that anchors them. So I would begin by saying, if the person speaks about spiritual truth, do they hold to the doctrine of the Trinity? Very mm. simply. Mm -hmm. Do they hold to the doctrine of the two natures of Christ, that he is both fully human in every way mm -hmm. and fully divine? Uh, do they hold to the fact that we are justified before God, that we are, our peace is wrought before God by the grace of God alone and through faith in Jesus Christ? Mm -hmm. See, these kind of things, I think, are anchor points, yeah. and we should be training our people when someone really attracts you. And there's nothing wrong with an attractive teacher. No. But no. what is it that they say about these points of doctrine that really anchor the Christian faith? And if the person isn't clear on that and doesn't articulate that on a regular basis, just run away. Yes. Have nothing to do <laughs> yeah. with that. Well, and I think what you're saying, and I think Isaac is saying too, we have to take a large degree of personal responsibility uh, for those that we would allow to influence our lives. So by meaning that, I'm saying, what is it that we believe? We have to take responsibility for those essentials of truth that we have to believe. Those things will guide us and direct us in respect to what other people are teaching. Yeah, and I would say this. I mean, we live in this star-studded age. So, I mean, stars are everything. I mean, people are sometimes, you know, it's been said, some people are only famous for being famous, right? Yeah. I mean, but the fact is, I mean, we're looking for stardom. Yeah. And, and I think somewhere in our own hearts and heads, we've got to get this through. Nothing wrong with somebody who's attractive and, 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 and calling people to follow. Yeah. I just want to say, I would take a boring, truthful person <laughs> over a very exciting, false person. And somewhere in our own hearts, the truth needs to look more attractive than the personality. Yeah. I mean, that's what we've already said, but mm -hmm. I think that's, that's that issue. Yeah. Now, I, I want to add to that, Ben, because I think there's something else. And that is, we, we need to also ask that when we follow someone, does that person allow us to reflect, to ask questions, to have our own opinions, yeah. Yeah. or is that shut down? Because if it's being shut down, and when rationality no longer matters, and some kind of a passion takes precedence over that, yeah. again, it should be just this danger warning that's flashing and saying, mm -hmm. I'm not allowed to individually ask questions here. Well, and, and that begs the question, because I think we're leading in that direction. How do we identify when we're in a place or with a person or with an organization that might be described as a cult? How would we know uh, that something it characterizes a cult? Yeah, so uh, I know that sometimes from a Christian perspective, we said a cult is something that deviates from historic Christian faith. You know, it claims fidelity to Christ, but it deviates from historic Christian doctrine. Now, we've said that. But I think usually the term cult in our culture uh, is taken from the idea that, you know, you have this following of a very, you know, important personality and that it takes away human freedom to ask reasonable, rational questions and when also access to the wider part of our society is now blocked from us. So you can't call your parents anymore. You can't call your loved ones anymore. You can't engage in relationships outside of this religious group. When that begins to happen again, we should have a red light flashing that says, stay away, beware, this is very dangerous. Why do you think, John, our culture has a fascination with cults? So if a documentary comes up about cults, a lot of people are interested in cults. Why do you, why do you think that is in our culture today? I, I think we're missing a lot of anchor points in our culture, and simply because we no longer have an agreed upon standard for truth. I'm not now speaking about the Christian faith, but the culture as a whole. Right, right. Every bit of truth is relative. Mm -hmm. So people are grasping around for something to live for. Mm -hmm. And because our culture no longer gives us the reason to live, right. you know, we start looking all over the place. Mm. And uh, so I think this is very attractive. Because I would expect that today, in today's age, you mentioned that a uh, cult would have, it, in past times, been uh, represented by moving away from sort of the distinctives of Christianity, yeah. those types of things. But I wouldn't think a cult today would be defined by that because we are so loose with what we believe to be true. It would be more defined by those other things. Are, are you not allowed to you know, be with other people? Are you not allowed to think your own thoughts? Are you not allowed to question things? But it wouldn't be as much gauge, uh, um, gauged by our Christian fundamental beliefs. Yeah, I mean, not long ago, uh, there was a cult called the Hale-Bopp 
Comet cult. Do you yeah. remember? Yeah, that? I do remember. See, that. it was an interesting cult because you know when the Hale Bob comet appeared, there were apparently an alien spaceship behind it. That's how it went. And if you committed suicide, you could join that uh, spaceship as it left our uh, solar system again. So, wow. you know, if you if you think about this, and all these people committed suicide. Uh, if, if, if you actually had an opportunity, you know, if Ben, if you and I were in that, and, then we, and I told Isaac what I was thinking, you'd go, you're thinking, what? Because <laughs> someone on the outside would suddenly just get this, oh my goodness gracious. So the only way these cults can make it is to prevent people from having a conversation right. on the outside. Right. Yeah. Let's go back to, uh, Isaac, just what you think personally mm -hmm. uh, in respect to what are the things that protect you personally from uh, learning untruth or accepting untruth? I think, I mean, it's nothing crazy new or anything like that. I just, I think spending time, in a sense, homework of reading the word. And it's not like homework, obviously. Don't, I don't want to have that negative spin to it at all. But really, I mean, it, it, you know, Jude, again, Jude talks about build yourself up in, the, in that one true faith. Build yourself up in it. And uh, that's a personal call. That that's something you ought to do. You gotta build yourself up and you gotta take time to read and pray and do all that kind of stuff so that when a, a counterfeit truth comes up, an untruth, like you're saying, kind of pops up, it's not as if we have to take that, look at it, question it, wonder about it. It just, it's an automatic like, ooh, something just seems a little bit off there. And I think the struggle for a lot of young adults today is that the the more external aspects of faith are so much more, uh, like they're so zealous and they want to do the external things, that like they want to do social justice, all this other stuff, you know, and the idea about actually thinking about what you believe is sort of put on the back burner and that's, we need to swap, you know, switch that around a little bit and uh, bring our zeal and our fervency back into what we're thinking about first and then those, those more external things will come as we do that, but. Yeah. That's fantastic. Well, thanks guys for today and starting a, an introduction into sort of the false teaching and how we need to protect ourselves from it. And we're gonna talk a little bit more uh, next week about false teaching within the church and how can we identify it within the church and what is our responsibility to our brothers and sisters in Christ. So join us again next week right here on Truth and Life Today. We hope you're enjoying the new Truth in Life Today show with Dr. John Newfeld. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode each week. But we want you to be involved in the show. To submit your own personal questions to Dr. John, you can email us at info at backtothebible.ca or find us on Facebook by searching Truth in Life Today.